Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to another uh, Monday Fun Day Trivia Challenge. Um, I've been told by Liz that today's uh, trivia has some tough questions in it. It's all about winemaking and maturation. Um, so if you want to join along uh, on the quiz app that we have, go ahead and you can scan the, the QR code uh, over. <laughs> Let me get over this way. Sorry, trying to get my bearings. Uh, so the QR code, go ahead and scan that or you can use the URL uh, down uh, below myquiz.org um, I forward slash I forward slash uh, and then the quiz number. And that way you can uh, play along and it'll automatically keep score. For those of you who'd rather play um, here in the comments section of uh, Facebook, just go ahead and put your answer into, uh, into the comments section uh, and then you'll just get that really warm, fuzzy feeling when you um, when we reveal uh, the answer uh, and when you got it right. So let me bring our um, quiz hostess, hostess with the mostess up on screen. Hey, Liz, how Hello, are you? Hello, Christian. So we'll, we'll get started here in a, in a minute. Um, do you have any, any players in, in the quiz app yet? No, I am not showing any players, but let me reload this just in case. Okay. Well, we can... Nope. We can Nope. Okay. Well, we'll leave the URL uh, open. Um, we'll leave the URL open here uh, and see who, you know, if they want to join later on, they can. I can do that. I have the QR code here. So um, I'll switch over to the screen. Um, and if you want to go. Okay. Well, happy Monday. People might be running a little slow between Rosé Day and Gin Day on Saturday and Bourbon Day on Sunday. It might be a slow start for Monday. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get started. We're on winemaking and maturation today. So our first question is, what is the science of winemaking called? A, amplop, ampliography. B, enology, Z, or C, zymology, and D, ethnology. Can you tell I have a little bit of fun when I'm writing these? Makes it a little bit of fun. Too much gin, rosé, and bourbon day. Yeah, not all mixed together. All right, so our first answer is enology. That is the science of winemaking. We've added a little more time so we can talk through some of these questions. And honestly, most of these, I was just looking for funography and ology terms and just had threw them all in there. So that was a part of this. And of course, I had to throw a kitty cat in here again. What oak is the preferred wood for barrel aging? A, English oak, B, hickory, C, red oak, or D, white oak? And yes, I did have to make it a little bit more difficult regarding what type of oak not just a general oak barrel, because that's what we generally talk about. The answer for this one is in fact white oak. They're specifically looking for white oak trees in, um, when they're going to make oak barrels. So that's one of those interesting things. It's very, very tough wood. I had a neighbor cut down their white oak tree and I think they broke the, uh, the, uh, the equipment in the process. All right, question number three. What single-celled organism converts sugar into grape juice to alcohol? Is it A, yeast? Is it B, carbon dioxide? Is it C, TCA? Or is it D, mega purple? Okay, I'm hoping everybody's able to get this one. The answer is, in fact, yeast. It is not carbon dioxide, it is not TCA, nor is it mega purple, but it is yeast that converts that sugar in the grape juice to alcohol, which helps make it our wonderful wine products that we love so much. All right, so let's go to a dictionary term. What is riddling? Is it A, adding sugar? Is it B, turning and lifting bottles to collect dead yeast cells? Is it C, adding of yeast to start second fermentation? Or is it D, disgorging? What does the term riddling mean? I was good and it didn't add a Batman joke in there. I was just going to say, where's the riddle me this, Batman? <laughs> 
what is Ritalin? Ritalin is turning and lifting of bottles to collect the dead yeast cells. This is specifically done with sparkling wine and traditional method uh, sparkling wines or champagne in particular. But that's what we're talking about with what is Ritalin. So question five, what does a barrel maker use to shape a barrel's oak staves? Okay, is it A, a saw? Is it B, a drill? Is it C, fire? Or is it D, a sander? What do they use to help shape it into that barrel shape? It's a little bit of a tricky question, and I'll be the first to admit this one. It is, in fact, fire. Good job, Darla and Alan, with this one. That's what they use. They've got to heat up that wood in order to bend it to flex it into that barrel shape. And that's how they are able to maintain, you know, that fun barrel shape that we love for holding our lovely wines and bourbons. Okay, question six. What scale system is used in the United States to measure the sugar content in grapes and wine? Is it A, Bome? Is it B, Oshleza? Is it C, Bricks? Or is it D, KMW? All right, this one's a kind of a tricky question. I'll be the first to tell you that one. Hey, Darla and Alan online got it on the, through the app, got it correctly. It is in fact bricks. Beaumet is used in France. Oschleisa is in Germany. And then KMW is in Austria. And that was one question that I remembered having to memorize from level two, I think it was when I took it for the first, took it. What is a different word for blending a number of different parcel of wines in French? Is it A, Ausbruck? Is it B, Assemblage? Is it B, Avocado? Or is it D, Aspersion? This was a fun little one. For blending of number of different parcels in French, is it, it is in fact Assemblage. Darla and Alan are doing a great job. Do we have anybody playing along through uh, comments? We sure do, yeah. So uh, some great answers here and a uh, couple, of, couple of right answers. Uh, Pedro and Catherine uh, both getting, getting that one correct as well. That's awesome. All right, true or false, sulfur dioxide is used to preserve, disinfect, and prevent oxidation in wine. I know sulfur dioxide gets a lot of positive and negative things talked about it. Some of it's still true and some of it's not true. But is it used to preserve, disinfect, and prevent oxidation in wine? That is, in fact, true. Sulfur dioxide is used to preserve, disinfect, and prevent oxidation in wine. It's always fun to hear people talk about sulfur dioxide with wine in 90% of the time. I feel like it's not true what you hear. Yeah, D Darla's cleaning up today with uh, 616 points there. She's doing awesome. What does rumage and degorgement remove from a bottle of fermented sparkling wine? Is it A, the cork? Is it B, extra acidity? Is it C, extra tannin? Or is it D, yeast sediment? What are we doing and what are we removing with these? It is in fact, wow, you guys are cleaning up. This is yeast sediment. That is exactly what is being removed with the bottle of sparkling wine, bottle fermented sparkling wine. Because you, when you have sparkling wine, you want that wine crystal clear. And so we need to get all that yeast sediment removed. Great job, Chris and Pedro in, in the comments section. Good answers. What does the level of sugar in the grapes determine in the wine? Is it A, the aromas of the wine? Is it B, the level of alcohol? Is it C, the level of acidity? Or is it D, the overall quality of the wine? We're talking about the sugar in the grapes. What does it determine? It is, in fact, the level of alcohol. You know, and I thought I was being a little too tough with these questions. I feel like I need to bring it even more next week. We have Wine Mensa members here who joined us. Oh, I'm impressed. You guys are doing great. 
everyone's doing fantastic. But yes, it is in fact the level of alcohol. Remember, that sugar gets converted into alcohol. Okay, so which is not used for filtering wine? Is it A, egg whites? Is it B, gelatin? Is it C, reducing the temperature? Or is it B, fish bladders or isinglass? So which one is not used for filtering wine? Specifically just talking about filtering wine. Got a couple different options up here. It is in fact reducing of temperature. Reducing of temperature is used for cold stabilization. It is not used for filtering the wine. I thought that would trip people up a little bit. I'm really impressed here. We gotta get tougher next time. I know. I'm gonna have to pull out my MW notes. <laughs> what are the things at the bottom of this cork in the photo? Is it A, broken glass? Is it B, sugar? Is it C, sand? Is it D, tartrates? What is on the bottom of this cork in the photo? This always trips up a number of people when you're out and about tasting wine. Let's see, oh, they've got it again. It's tartrates. It is in fact tartrates. It's 100% safe. They're sometimes referred to as wine crystals. There's nothing wrong with the wine. It is not a problem to drink the bottle when you find these. Usually it's always a nice little surprise when you find them. Okay, let's see if they get this one. This is a tough one. Where does bentonite not come from? A, Wyoming, B, South Dakota, C, Germany, or D, Utah. Where do you not get bentonite? Okay, th this is a tough one. I told you, I try. <laughs> it brings some tough questions. So where does it not come from? So bentonite is actually not found in Utah. You can find it in Wyoming, you can find it in South Dakota, you can find it in Germany, but you cannot find it in Utah. So, and that's where I will admit this was a really tough question. This one bentonite was the first stumper. Is, yeah, you know, I've got to throw a few harder ones in there. Okay, so question 14, what, which extraction techniques are used in port wine production? Is it A, foot treading? Is it B, auto vinifiers? Is it C, robotic lagares? Is it D, piston plungers? Or is it E, all of the above? This is a fun one. And the answer for this one is actually all of the above. You can find foot treading around uh, harvest time you can even find photos of port producers with people dancing around in uh, the fermenters they'll use auto vitifiers they'll use robotic lagares they'll also use piston plungers they want to extract as much tannin as they possibly can all right so sir lee we talk about sir lee a lot in winemaking um in level two and three i feel like so what does it add to wine does it add a vanilla and butter it, does it add B, complexity and body? Does it add C, fruitiness? Or does it add D, tannins? There's a lot of misconceptions with Sir Lee, I find, with newer students. It is, in fact, complexity and body. Darla and Alan, you guys are rocking it. It does not add vanilla and butter flavors or fruitiness or tannins, but it does add that complexity and body to the wines in particular. And that's what Sir Lee adds when you're looking for wine Sir Lee. Okay, I hope everyone gets this one. What are these egg-shaped fermenters made out of? What's the main thing that they are used to make? Is it A, stainless steel? It is B, wood? Is it C, concrete? Is it D, clay? These were really, really popular, I would say, about 10 years ago, where all the, all the cool winemakers were using them. You're still finding them out there, but they're not sort of the new hot thing. It is, in fact, these are concrete egg-shaped fermenters, concrete egg fermenters. You'll go into a winery, and a lot of times they'll be tucked in a back corner. Sometimes they used to hide them. Now they're a little bit more front and center. But you're finding a lot of winemakers that are playing with them still. It's just not sort of the hot new thing anymore, but a lot of producers are using them. 
Okay, so what pushes the grape skins and put them uh, up to the top of the open top fermenter vat, that vat to form a cap? Is it A, a screen cap? So what makes these grape skins float up to the top? Is it A, a screen cap? Is it B, carbon dioxide? Is it C, gravity? Or is it D, sulfur? What makes them float up to the top? It is in fact carbon dioxide, which is a natural byproduct of the alcoholic fermentation. And all those little bubbles help float those to the top. I'm glad nobody put down gravity. Otherwise we'd have to have a different conversation. All right, what is the correct spelling of this yeast that can cause a flaw in yarn or in flaw in wine at high levels as it imparts a funky or barnyardy scent? So how do we spell this yeast? Let's see if people know how to correctly spell. And I'll pronounce it after we vote. It is in fact Bretomyces. And wow, they got it. This is one that I get so many times misspelled in tasting notes from a number of students. And I particularly love it when it's called Brit instead of Brat. But the, the, the Brits. It is, in fact, Bretomyces. All right, second to the last question. Where does amphora, the large ceramic container, come from? Is it Italy? Is it B, Greece? Is it C, Egypt? Or is it D, Turkey? Where does amphora, specifically the term amphora, come from? And amphora fermentation is sort of the new hot thing, and along with aging also. It is, in fact, coming from Greece. That's where amphora comes from. Darla and Alan are crushing it. I'm guessing we're doing, we've got a couple who are also doing great on Facebook. We are, yeah. Chris, Chris and Catherine and Pedro uh, answering questions uh, quite flawlessly. Nice. All right, to wrap it up, we've got another barrel question with our kitty cat. I, I love cats. Sorry. What is a trade name for a person that makes and repair, repairs barrels and casks? Is it A, a handyman? Is it B, a cooper? Is it C, a distiller? Or is it D, an electrician? What do we call the person who makes and repairs barrels and casks? It is, in fact, a cooper. Great job, Darla and Alan. Great. So, Darla, I think she just had to, to jump on a couple of questions before Alan joined in. Uh, but I think they pretty much scored equally um, side by side. So, uh, and and uh, some great scores here uh, on the, in the comment section uh, of Facebook uh, as well. So, let's see. Let's go back here. Well, thanks, Liz. That was fun. My pleasure. I think there were a couple of tough ones in there, but we have a very smart crowd. So um, if there are any topics that you'd like to see uh, or propose for uh, Monday trivia, go ahead and put those in the comment section and we'll uh, do our best to accommodate. Uh, Liz has been doing a great job. Um, thanks for joining us from the from the barrel room there behind you. And uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll have you back again soon. Join us here uh, on Wednesday for another study hall uh, session. Uh, this time, I believe it's on port wine uh, at the level two and level three um, level. And then on uh, Saturday, we'll have another special guest uh, as well. So, um, you know, stay tuned on our Facebook channel for more updates. Liz, thanks a lot. My pleasure, thank you. We'll see you, we'll see you again next, next Monday maybe or the Monday after that. Sounds good. All right, cheers. Cheers.